Got another past exam question here for the synoptic questions playlist. So this one's number four. And remember, if you're doing OCR A, we're talking about paper three. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So obviously the first thing I'm going to do is knock up a typical titration results table, and then we'll just enter these results in. So remember the important thing to bear in mind is if the base of the meniscus isn't quite on a line, so if we look at this one here, you can see it's between 23.1 and 23.2. The only thing we can say for that is 23.15. You see that's the final bureau rating for titration one. And the other thing to say is if the base of the meniscus is exactly on a line, it's point something zero. So this initial reading for titration one is 0 0.60. So there's all the results there. So the titras are those there. And I've underlined these zeros here because that's the kind of thing I see missed off if I'm marking work. So for the main titra, we're looking for um, two concordant results. So you can see that 22.55 and 22.45, they're only 0 0.10 cm cubed apart. So they are concordant. Titration 2 is too far away. So we're going to base the main on 1 and 3. So that gives a main titer of 22.50. Okay, so we'll move on to the calculation now. So I've got my trusty diagram here to visualize what's happened. Um, so what have they done? They've taken 2.495 grams of A. And you'll notice there I've highlighted that and the word monobasic. We're told it's monobasic. So what does that mean? It's it donates a single H plus. So in other words, this acid reacts with sodium hydroxide in a one-to-one -one ratio. So they've dissolved that in 250 cm cubed. They've taken a tenth out, 25 cm cubed, gone into the conical flask, and they've titrated it against the sodium hydroxide. So those titration results, we worked out the mean titer was 22.50, and the concentration of the alkali is that. So the first thing we can do is work out the moles of sodium hydroxide used in the titration. So concentration times volume in decimeters cubed, 1.89 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So remember, it's reacting in a 1 to 1 ratio with the acid. So there must be the same number of moles of acid in that 25 cm cubed. Now we want to know how many moles of the acid A is in the 250 cm cubed, because essentially it's the moles of A in that mass. So we multiply by 10 because the 25 is a tenth of the 250. So now we know the moles in 250, the MR of A is going to be the mass divided by the moles, which comes out at 132. So moving on to what R is now. So there's compound A. We know now that its MR is 132. This part of it, the bit we do know about, has an MR of 75. So obviously the MR of the R group is going to be 132 minus 75, which comes out at an MR of 57. So it's made from carbon and hydrogen, so it's an alkyl group. So how many carbons? Well, it looks like four, because that'll get us to 48, and then another nine hydrogens takes us up to 57. So that means the R group is C4H9. Okay, so now we've got this sorted out, we now need to work out the structure of this R group. So that's where the business of four optical isomers comes in. So if it's got four optical isomers, it must have two chiral centers. So obviously that's one there, so I'll just highlight that. Now there's obviously another chiral center within this R group. So if we class the R group as a straight butyl group, we don't actually have a chiral center. None of these carbons are chiral. So that can't be the structure of it. So if we change the structure of the alkyl group to this here, you can see that this carbon is now chiral because we have got four different groups attached to it. So obviously we've got this group here, got the hydrogen, got the methyl, and we've got the ethyl group. So that there is the answer. And if you wanted to see it as a skeletal formula, it's that there. Some reactions of compound A. So the first reaction is a reaction with magnesium. It's added to a solution of compound A. Gas bubbles are seen and magnesium slowly dissolves. So this is just a straightforward reaction of a metal with a carboxylic acid. 
So in terms of the chemical equation, we've got this here. So just be careful. Magnesium forms a two plus ion. This would only be one minus this carboxylate ion. So we need two of those for the magnesium ion. So that's how the equation balances there. The bubbles of gas are obviously the hydrogen. It's a redox reaction, not neutralization. Redox because the magnesium has been oxidized. So it's gone from its zero oxidation state up to plus two and this hydrogen here has been reduced so it starts out at plus one and it goes to zero in the element. Next reaction is a little bit more complicated so compound A heated with a few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid as a catalyst and we get this cyclic dimer that's formed. So the word dimer means it's made from two molecules so if we just think polymer they're made from many monomers many molecules so a dimer is made from two molecules. So what must be happening here is two moles of compound A reacting together and forming this cyclic dimer. So there's our two molecules of compound A. I've drawn this one the other way around because I want to show that in the presence of this concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst, we can get an ester formed because the alcohol part of this one will react with the carboxylic acid part of this one and form an ester likewise here. So I've highlighted the atoms we need to make the water molecules that's obviously going to form an, an ester forms via this method and hopefully you can see that if we take out the OH and an H here likewise here we can create this ring here so this is obviously the cyclic dimer but we're going to get two H2O molecules. In terms of reaction type we could either say it's esterification or because a smaller molecule has been produced in this case it's H2O and also call it a condensation reaction. So moving on to part C, the question turns to transition element chemistry now. So we're told we've got this um, complex chromium three um, picolinate. So the three, that Roman three means it's chromium three plus. So obviously we've got three identical ligands around there. So they must have a one minus charge each to keep the whole thing neutral. We're told it's neutral. So the structure of the ligand must be that. So it's attaching via the lone pair on this O minus and the lone pair on this nitrogen. Remember it's a date of covalent bond that's formed or a coordinate bond you would call it between here and here. So moving on to the calculation now we're told a typical tablet of this stuff here contains 200 micrograms of chromium. So you can see we've got one chromium in there. So the moles of chromium is equal to the moles of the whole thing. So the moles of chromium and obviously the moles of the tablet, 200 times 10 to the minus 6, that's 200 micrograms, and there's the conversion there. So 200 times 10 to the minus 6 over 52 is that many moles. So the mass of this is the moles times the MR. So you'll notice I've worked out the MR of the whole thing there. It's 418. So that's coming out to three significant figures at 1.61 times 10 to the minus 3 grams.